Hello everyone, my name is Pastor Bernard Odeo from Good News Mission, Voy Church. And also I've received once more again this grace to be able to minister to you through this channel, together with Pastor uh, Ibrahim Kimani, who is ministering also here in KWS, Kenya, Savo East. And uh, today I want to talk to you about the two reports from the book of Matthew chapter 28 from verse 1 to verse 15. Uh, I will read, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sabbath. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. And his countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not you, for I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples word. And as, as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail! And they came and held him by the feet, and worshipped him, and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid, go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there they, they shall see him. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watchmen, some of the watch came into the city, and showed unto the chief priests all these things that were done. And when they were assembled with the uh, elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, verse 13, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we sleep, verse 14. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you, verse 15. So they took the money and did as they were taught, and this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. So I've read um, from verse 1 up to verse 15. Uh, the book of Matthew is one of the amazing books of the gospel, and uh, the book of the Matthew, in my perception, I can say that is the book of comparison from chapter 1 all the through of the book of Matthew, you can see he had this art of comparing uh, one, uh, one thing from another. From chapter 1, the book of Matthew is talking about the, two gene the book of the true genealogy. The, genealogy, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, and the book of, there is also the book of the genealogy of Adam. So there is the comparison between the, genealogy, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ and the book of the genealogy of Adam. And also, from the same book, we do see that there is also the ten virgins. In these ten virgins also there is comparison. Comparison between five who are wise and also five who are foolish. And also in the same book now, we want to see the comparison of two things, the two reports. These two reports are also different and also we can compare them. The book of Matthew, it was written for the Jew, and because the Jew want to see the sign, though Matthew was writing unto them to be able to show unto them that this same Jesus Christ whom you know, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, is that same Messiah whom the, the Bible has been prophesying about him. So through this, uh, we want to also to see, as we are talking about it, I will be able to know clearly uh, which, where is your stand as a believer or as a Christian? Which side do you stand? Which report have you received and which report are you living with? 
So uh, here is talking about uh, on a first day of the week, which is on Sunday, as it began to down. Now, these women went to prepare the body of Jesus Christ. But as they went, they found that uh, there was this one angel who came and removed the, uh, the stone, which was on, at the door of the tomb. And then he sat upon it. And then he was asking them, why are you here? Who are you looking for? Are you looking for Jesus Christ who was uh, crucified? He is not here. He has risen. Then through this he was able to tell them, go and tell your bro his brothers that he is waiting for them. He will meet with them at Galilee. So on their way also Jesus Christ will meet with them and will greet them. And Jesus Christ will tell them likewise. Tell my brothers that I will meet with them at Galilee. Then as they were going, then we can be able to say also here at the tomb there were soldiers. I don't know what they were doing there because I've seen many tombs. But I've not seen the tomb which is being protected that much and that strongly like this tomb of Jesus Christ. Why were they there and what were they doing? I want also to explain this on one thing. There's the perception of religion towards Jesus Christ. How do uh, the religion perceive Jesus Christ? With what kind of a mind do they have towards Jesus Christ? Can we look about this through chapter 27? from verse uh, 62 to 66. It says like this, Now the next day that followed, the day of the preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came, to, came together unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that the deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will arise again. Command therefore that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day, until the third day, lest his disciples came by night and steal him away and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead, so the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, You have a watch, go your way, make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. So we can be able to understand why are the soldiers, so many soldiers, almost all of them were taken to be able to guard the tomb of Jesus Christ. Why were they guiding? Because the, this high priest and the Pharisees had this perception. Uh, he said that he will rise again. Now, because of this, we don't want his body to be stolen, and then the, uh, the first error to be, uh, to be more worse than the first error. Because in, as Jesus Christ was alive and was teaching, they were so much against the teachings of Jesus Christ. They were so much against the Jesus Christ. Now they were afraid that after now he have died, maybe this message can be more worse and more heavy unto them than when he was uh, alive. So they wanted still to fight Jesus Christ, although they knew that Jesus Christ have died, is in the tomb. So in which way they are they fighting Jesus Christ? They are saying that let the tomb to be sealed, let the tomb to be watched thoroughly, so that his body may not be stolen. But may I ask you one question? Do you think that they are afraid of Jesus Christ, the body of Jesus Christ being stolen? Or they are afraid of the message of Jesus, which Jesus Christ came to deliver. They are afraid of the work of Jesus, which Jesus Christ came to, uh, his mission on this world. What are they afraid of? The death and burial of Jesus Christ, or they are afraid of the message, that work which Jesus Christ came to give unto mankind. Yes, why did Jesus Christ come into this world? The Bible tells us, uh, I'll read from the book of Matthew, as sin entered into the world through one man, and death also came into the, the, the world because of sin, then sin, death spread to all men because all have sinned, then also Jesus Christ had to come. Now, why, had, why did Jesus Christ have to come in this world? In the book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, is saying that without shedding of blood, there's no what? Remission of sin. There's no removal of sin. 
there's no forgiveness of sin. Then when Jesus Christ came, he had now to, he came to partake in, uh, to saving us from sin, for our sin to be remitted, for our sin to be forgiven. That's why in Matthew chapter 26 verse 28 is saying like this, For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So when Jesus Christ came into this world, he did not come to die because of him. He did not come to die because of himself, but he came to die and to shed this blood because of us, because of our sin. But now, religion, before the church of God could be revealed in the heart of people, before Jesus Christ could be revealed in the heart of people, people have met with religion. And people have established religion in their heart. Now, if there is the church of God, what is religion? Religion does not belong to God. Religion is just a certain way of worship. Then through this certain way of worship, when now Jesus Christ brought now the true way of worshiping God, of making people to be a true worshiper, religion was fighting this. Now when Jesus Christ has, uh, was crucified and then he he died on the cross and then he was buried. This now was the way which they were fighting Jesus Christ. Now they were saying that let the, the tomb to be sealed. Let it be watched. Let it, no one come there. But they were fighting that work of Jesus Christ which we came to do to deliver us from sin. Which is the work of the Satan, the work of devil. To block the works of Jesus Christ, to block the light not to shine in the heart of many people, not to shine in the mind of many people, so that many people can be able to know God. So, here in the book of Matthew, they were saying what? That deceiver. We heard that deceiver. Then they are calling Jesus who? Deceiver. Yes, even you will be surprised to see that you are calling yourself, you, you, the faith which you have, you are calling the works of Jesus Christ that they are deception. You are calling Jesus Christ this deceiver because you are in religion. You are not in the church of God. Then, let us see uh, about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Did Jesus Christ really resurrect it? Did he really come out of the tomb alive? Or was his body stolen? Yes. Although the soldiers were there, they could be able to witness and they could be able to take back the report. But now that report was halted. Because the, another perception of the religion we can be able to see it in the book of Matthew chapter 28 from verse 11. Where now the soldiers who are taking back the report after they have seen Jesus Christ has risen. He's saying like this. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we sleep. Verse 14. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and will secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. So they took the money and they did as they were told. That's why I was asking this question. Do you think the chief priests were really afraid that the body of Jesus Christ would be stolen? No. They were afraid of the message of Jesus Christ, of the mission of Jesus Christ, of the works of Jesus Christ. And Behind them, who is this that is afraid of the works of Jesus Christ? Who is this that is afraid of the mission of Jesus Christ towards us in this world? It is Satan himself. It is the devil himself. That's why the work of the Satan through religion is to block the works of Jesus Christ so that it cannot be revealed in the heart of many people. So now, two reports went out, because as Jesus Christ was, uh, as did resurrect, he also went and told his disciples what? He sent them. In verse, uh, 
I'll read from Matthew chapter 28, verse 17 to verse 20. Now, where Jesus Christ is also sending his disciples. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So Jesus Christ resurrected and he was also sending his disciples to be able to give out the report, to be able to go and witness. Now the soldiers are outside there witnessing. Now also disciples who are sent to go outside there and witness. Now you who call yourself a believer, you who call yourself a Christian, which report did you hear? Did you hear the report of the soldiers saying that Jesus Christ was stolen? Or did you hear the report of the disciples saying, Amen, Jesus Christ resurrected, he overcame sin, he overcame death, he saved us. Now we are justified. Now we are righteous. Now we are holy. Or which report do you believe in? The report of the soldiers or the report of the disciples? As you are listening to me, you'll be able now to confirm which faith you have been living with. And now which faith is now you should live with through the book of Matthew chapter 28. Because let us look about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which the Satan is fighting strongly through religion. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is the one chapter which the whole of it is talking about the power of resurrection. Why is it that God gave this 1 Corinthians chapter 15 to talk only about the power of resurrection? About how Jesus Christ overcame death, how he overcame everything. Why? Let us be able to see. First thing... What is the work of, which work did Jesus Christ came to do? For I, del chapter 15, verse 3, saying like this, For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, verse 4, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So, the Bible is telling us here clearly, one, Jesus Christ died on the cross according to the scripture. The gospel is the gospel is has three aspects. The first aspect is that Jesus Christ died on the cross because of our sin. The second aspect in the gospel is that and he was buried. The third aspect in the gospel is that and he resurrected the third day according to the scripture. The gospel without three, these three aspects is not gospel. The gospel without resurrection, the gospel without touching about the death, why did Jesus Christ die? And yes, he, uh, when he died, he was buried. And when he was buried, he resurrected. It's not the gospel. Then, verse 13 and 14 is saying like this, but if there have been no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? Let us put it clearly. If Jesus Christ did not rise, then let us look at it in perception of the report of the soldiers. If Jesus Christ did not resurrect, if, if there have been no resurrection of the dead, then Christ did not rise. Risen. Verse 14. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is vain. If Christ did not resurrect, then the preaching of the disciples, the preaching which I'm giving you today, is useless. And also the faith you are, which you are trying to base upon it is useless. Now, which one is the truth? Did Jesus Christ resurrect, or was his body stolen? Which means that he is still in tomb, he is still captured by death. Which one is the truth? In verse 17, he's saying like this, follow with me. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, you are yet in your sins. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is 
vain. You are, you are yet in your sins. It is saying, it's telling us clearly here that if Jesus Christ did not resurrect, then our faith, then my faith is useless. Then you are still in your sin. Then how can we be able to put it clearly? If Jesus Christ did not resurrect, then the soldiers are saying the truth. One. Then if Jesus Christ did not resurrect, then we are still in our sin. Two. So what is the meaning? If Jesus Christ did not resurrect, then his, his mission which he came to do here on earth to save us from sin is useless. He did not accomplish it. Now ask yourself, which report do you believe in? Do you believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Yes. And if it's yes, then do you have sin in your heart? If you have sin in your heart, it means that you have received the report of the soldiers, which they are outside there saying, saying what? Jesus Christ did not resurrect. His body was stolen. Yes, this is what you have in your heart, the report of the soldiers. And if you have the report of the disciples, the witnessing of the disciples, that Jesus Christ resurrected, amen, he overcame death, he overcame sin, we are righteous, we are perfect, we are holy, then you don't have sin in your heart. Many Christians outside there, they call themselves sinners. When you ask them, are you saved? Yes, I am saved. Jesus Christ is the savior of my soul, is the savior of my life. Then do you have sin? Yes, I have sin. Then what is this? This means that purely they belong unto the report of the soldiers. They have received the report of the soldiers, but not the report of uh, the, the disciples which they have received from Jesus, but the report of soldiers which they have received from the high priest and the Pharisees. Who are the high priests and the Pharisees? These ones are the elders of the church, the leaders of the church. But now they are the leaders of the church who are fighting Jesus Christ. Then, which, or which one is the truth? If Jesus Christ resurrects, then we are free from sin. Then we don't have sin in our heart. Because when, uh, as I talk, uh, as I talk to you in the uh, my former uh, the other. Uh, someone, I remember telling you like this, if you go to Jerusalem, you will see there, there is the tomb of Jesus. If you go to Saudi Arabia, you will see there, there is the tomb of Mohammed. If you go to America, there is the tomb of Abraham Lincoln, and also the great people of the great presidents of America. If you go to South Africa, you will find the tomb of Mandela. If you go where? There is the tomb of uh, many great people in this world. Now, in, according to the principle of this world, they do say that death has conquered many people and that death is the conqueror. But today I want to tell you one thing. If you go to the tomb of Jesus Christ there at Jerusalem, you will find it, it is empty. It is not that the body of Jesus Christ was transferred from that tomb to another tomb, no. Jesus Christ resurrected, which means that he overcame sin, he overcame death. Then when he overcame sin and when he overcame death, he came to save us, to set us free from sin. That's why, according to verse 17, and if Christ be not risen, your faith is vain, you are yet in your sin. Which means that if Jesus Christ is risen, then my faith is not vain, my faith is not useless. If Jesus Christ is, uh, has risen, then I am not in my sin, which means that I don't have sin, which means that you don't have sin. But what do you believe in? Let us look at it clearly, how Jesus Christ overcame death through verse 55 to verse 58. He's saying like this, O death, where is thy sting? O, o grave, where is thy victory? The sting the, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be you, there, be you steadfast and movable always, abounding in the work of the Lord, 
For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The Bible is confirming unto us strongly, so firmly, that Jesus Christ overcame death. That Jesus Christ emerged to be a victor. Now, if he emerged to be a victor, and the work which he came to do, he came to do it because of me, because of you, because of your soul, because of my soul, then we are victorious through Jesus Christ. Then we are the people who have overcome sin. We have the people who have overcome death. Death has nothing over us again. Sin has nothing over us again. But now what do you believe in? What is your faith? Let me look at it more clearly through the second uh, Corinthians and then I will end there. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 19 is saying like this. To wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath commanded unto us the word of reconciliation. Verse 21. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Amen. Jesus Christ was made to be seen for us so that us we might be able to have the righteousness of God in him. So, do you have sin or are you righteous? Do you still call yourself a sinner although you are a Christian or are you righteous? Romans chapter 4 verse 25 is saying like this. It's also talking about the power of resurrection. It's saying like this. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Jesus Christ was given to die because of our sin, because of our transgression, because of our iniquities. And he was raised again so that we might be able to be justified, to be counted that we have been sanctified, we have been washed, we have been made holy, we have been made righteous then this one should be the state of our faith. Which one is the statement of your faith? Which kind of report have you had? Then I land here, let us pray. But before that, as you listen to this, may you be able to like it and also subscribe it and also share it so that many people can be able to receive this message. Thank you. Uh, thank you, our dear Heavenly Father, for everything, for the grace which you have bestowed upon us even you have given unto us this ministry through YouTube so that many people can be able to receive salvation through this channel, Lord God, which you have given unto uh, our pastor, uh, Ibrahim Kimani, to be able to use this channel to preach unto many. May you be able also, oh Lord God, to open it and make it, Lord God, to reach many people so that many people may be able to know the truth, this hidden truth, which Satan is trying to hide in the heart of many people. Satan wants that Jesus Christ to remain buried in the heart of many people. But what do you want, God? According to Romans chapter 10, verse 9, you are saying that, that if we believe that you resurrect him from dead, that we'll be saved. Which means that you want us to believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ so that he might be able to set us free from sin. Thank you, God, for your great message in the Bible will still be able to reach many people and many people will be able to be set free from sin. In Jesus Christ, I do pray and believe. Amen.